Welcome to the September 2007 edition of Outlook Video, your nationally recognized award-winning show for gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender communities. I'm Roberta gonzalez Greg, And I'm Tom Smith. After Ken Yeager, the first openly gay elected official in San Jose, left his council member seat for the Santa Clara County Board of Supervisors, he was succeeded by Pierluigi Oliverio, who won a runoff election March 6, 2007. Join me later on our show when I talk with council member Oliverio, a San Jose State graduate whose background includes work in the restaurant industry, teaching in public schools, and stints in the semiconductor and software industries. His political background includes a successful campaign to fund books, magazines, and computers at all San Jose libraries. Wow. Oh. But well, let's get our show started with Tom's interview with council member Pierre Luigi Oliveria. I am Madam, and you are watching Outlook Video. <laughs> Love Yanni! Councilmember Oliverio took office on March 20, 2007, and has been working very hard on a variety of issues that specifically impact District 6 residents and the City of San Jose overall. Upon taking office, Councilmember Oliverio worked to keep the airport curfew in place, has attended many community meetings, and has been against the further planning and development of Coyote Valley. He serves on a variety of committees and has just been recommended by Mayor Reed to serve on the General Plan Task Force Update Committee. Worth noting about Councilmember Oliverio is that he's not gay. However, he is a supporter of the LGBT community, which is why he's here. Councilmember Oliverio has attended Gay Bingo, continued the tradition of raising the rainbow flag at San Jose City Hall in the month of June in honor of Gay Pride Month, and attended and sponsored the Gay Pride Parade in San Jose. When I asked Councilmember Oliverio why he supports LGBT rights, he responded, because I am human and LGBT issues are human issues. Welcome, Councilmember Oliverio. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. So you're new on the council. How was the flag raising received this year when you decided to continue that? It was, it was well attended uh, by members of the LGBT community. Uh, I raised the flag with uh, some of my fellow council members and uh, current county supervisor, Ken Yeager, who I replaced on the city council. And uh, it was an exciting opportunity to, you know, because what really when you're raising the flag, it's speaking to not only rights for sexual orientation, but it's talking about discrimination as a whole. Because you need to be, um, you need to be on top of any type of discrimination, whether it be uh, race, gender, age, sexual orientation, and really the rainbow flag, outside of being the representation of the LGBT community, also represents discrimination against all, all people in society. Besides working to end discrimination, what do you think you can do to eliminate it? Or at least when it comes your way, what can you do to, to minimize it? Uh, I think you have to pounce on it. I mean, I think if you tolerate it and things happen uh, that are negative, then, and you tolerate it, then that uh, uh, allows someone the confidence to go forward and do something else to someone else. And so I think when events happen, it's important to show up, speak with the media, support the people and say, you know, this is not our type of community. This might be something in another area, but not here. Now, who in your background or what type of personal experience have you had that um, brought you to this point of view? Well, I guess in, in, in my life growing up, being a Roman Catholic, I had that religious point of view, but I've also, I almost say it's like a Buddhist Catholic, right? You know, you're just trying to be nice to everyone that you can because you feel that, you know, there's no energy spent being negative. Mm -hmm. right? It's just a waste of energy. Um, having various friends that I've grown up with that are part of the LGBT community also brings more awareness to these types of issues. So I think it's also having that exposure to people uh, from different than my, uh, my own you know, Italian Roman Catholic background. Well, that's great that you've gone beyond just your background and how you were raised to, to question that. I know at least one Democratic presidential candidate who is still struggling with that. So mm -hmm. um, that's commendable. Um, how do you stay updated in LGBT communities and what's going on in, in, in the community? Um, through friends, uh, through staff members that are LGBT community that work for me uh, or are part of my team. Uh, in addition, being involved with, uh, in San Jose, we have the Billy DeFrank Center, which is right. on the Alameda, which is a, a center for the LGBT community to come together. Um, so between those three areas, I'm kept well in the tune of things that uh, are, are needed to assist. You won out of a field, I think, of six people. Correct. So there was a question of, would you be, you know, in, you know, uh, of a voice that that could speak for us, and would you listen to us? Mm -hmm. And um, it was great spending the time with you and, and talking. Well, thank you. I, it's something that I, I'm proud of, 
and then I'll continue to do for as long as I sit on the San Jose City Council. What other priorities do you have? We mentioned and we touched on a couple of those, mm -hmm. but I wanted to just ask you on some what other priorities you have as a first term. Sure. As a council member representing uh, 100,000 people, you have the issues that affect the 100,000, which are like quality of life issues, whether they be parks, whether they be uh, public safety, whether it be uh, traffic calming so people aren't driving like maniacs in your streets. And then you have the perspective right. of the city as a whole, mm -hmm. you know, building within the city boundary, not having just continued expanse of suburbia. Right. Um, making sure that we have enough industrial land so we can take advantage of the next wave in economics, uh, economic trends, whether it be medical device, You know, biotech. at this point, I've got to cut you off because we're out of time. Well, hey, I had a not. great time. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for coming on the show. For those of you who would like to send an email to Councilmember Oliverio, please look at your screen. Um, send it to that email address. And thank you very much for coming on our show. We appreciate it. Thank you very much.